Hey gang, it's KR King of D&D Homebrew talking today about the four principles that I always keep in mind when running a role-playing situation for my players in my RPG game. And a lot of times people will say, well, it's not, you know, role-playing is, the whole game is role-playing. You're talking about social interaction or social encounters. To me, that's the role-playing aspect as opposed to, you know, I am playing a fighter in a combat situation. I could be in a miniatures game, skirmish game, or a you know, I'm doing exploration that could be a board game or whatever. Whereas what, you know, kind of defines a, a role-playing game is when you're interacting with the, you know, the NPCs or the sentient creatures or whatever, negotiating or, you know, asking them questions or, or threatening or intimidating them. That's the role play of a game. But whatever, those are just definitions of terms. But really what it gets down to, as I said, when I'm running this as a GM, I'm always thinking about number one, what are the objectives of the NPCs that the players are interacting with? And have the players think about that as well. What are their objectives for this role play situation? The second principle is to say yes as a GM when the players are, uh, you know, role playing with your NPCs. They're, they're asking questions or they're trying to find out information or just or they're just playing in a world. Don't, you know, shut them down. Don't, you know, they have to do the exact right thing or forget it. That's not a good idea. The third thing is to think about introducing new storylines when the players are role-playing. To make the game more than just about them talking back and forth, but as they're going in this, as they're, as they're taking this, this side of the game, things are happening in front of them that are going to lead to uh, more interesting encounters and uh, things that are happening in the world, in the world of the social interaction of, of uh, humanoids. And the final thing is don't go overboard on flavor when you're doing a role-playing situation because this can bog the game down and oftentimes it's not as interesting as you think as the GM. All right, so thinking about objectives, let's say the players go to a town and they the town guard is there and they're taking you know people's papers or whatever as they go through and the players say, hey, uh, we're looking for this merchant, this guy. That's the first person they see. What is a guard's objectives? He's got to keep moving people through. He's got to check, you know, their papers. He's worried about his boss, whoever that is. Uh, you know, there maybe have been reports of thieves or look for suspicious people, all this stuff. Does this guard necessarily want to give these strangers this information? But you're saying yes, right? So he may say, I don't know anything about that, but you could ask that guy over there. Uh, he's, you know, one of the big traders in the market square or something like that. And then move on because he doesn't want to bother with the players. And that's it. And you're keeping it moving. You're keeping it brief. He's got things to do. Same thing. You go to a tavern. You ask the, you know, the, the bartender or waitress or whatever. Hey, I want to know this. And they'll, they're, they're there to work. They're, their objectives are, but not necessarily to make customers mad, right? Because you're thinking about saying yes. So again, have you, have you seen this merchant? I'm looking for this guy or anything suspicious about this. Whatever this is, whatever the questions that they have, because the players are engaging in this role playing with an objective of their own in mind. They have to find out this merchant uh, that may have dealt in this item that they're looking for. And that's the only, that's the only contact they have, the name. So they're going to ask people about that. The people are going to talk to them because of the getting into the no thing is where you everybody, unless there's an objective there, people just say, I don't know. I don't know. Why are you bothering me? Get away from me, right? The only reason there would be is an objective of you're living in this, this town where strangers are, everyone's very suspicious. You have an autocratic ruler that if they find out you're talking to strangers, you could be imprisoned or something. Then they have a motivation for everyone to say, I don't know. I don't know. And they look really nervous because that's that tells the player something. That introduces a storyline which is in this town, people don't want to talk to strangers. They're afraid. And they're not telling you why they're afraid. So that's a storyline, not just saying no. But in an ordinary situation, people like to talk oftentimes. Again, as long as the players are friendly enough or whatever, I mean, they might be a very threatening group and then you know they, they're going to understand that. That's why you have a face of a party, right? Someone with some charisma. Presumably that person is good, and asking people, hey, you know, uh, where's this? I heard about this town down on the river. How do I get there? Like asking for directions. And if you do stop at a, in the old days before phones and maps and GPS, you'd go to a gas station or someone on the street and say, hey, how do I get to this place? And more often than not, they'd go, oh, you go down three blocks here or where. You know, they may have the wrong directions. But they're not necessarily going to just be like looking at you and running away or whatever. 
there might be places where that happens. Some war-torn city or something. You don't just go and ask for directions. You know, they might attack you. I don't know. But that's a storyline right there. So I had some players looking. They went to this guy. It was just to sell. They had got they killed these manacores, and they had the manacore spikes, and they heard you could sell these, and they found this person in the city they heard about, a craftsman who, you know, bought these. And so they went there, and they were negotiating for this. And they came in, the guy said, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I do those. And he was looking at him. Suddenly these guys came in the store, and he became very distracted. And he said, one moment. And he went over and talked to these people that were looking a little shady, right, suspicious. And he directed them into the back room. And he came back, and he very quickly gave them the price they wanted. He didn't, he didn't haggle anymore, and he said goodbye. And the players left, and he put a closed sign on the door. That introduces a storyline. Who are those people? And sure enough, the players hung back across the street. And when these guys left, they followed them. And it led to a whole story about this smuggling ring. So it was introduced. They decided to go to this person to see if to sell these uh, manicure spikes. Uh, the guy was, was going, uh, you know, it was, it was going right along. There wasn't a lot of, this is the guy did this. He wasn't like, I don't want those. Who the hell are you? He didn't, it wasn't until these people came in. And then he just quickly gave them their price. It was worth it for him to pay, to not haggle, pay the price because these guys he wanted to deal with in the back room. So it's a role-playing situation in which everybody has their objectives clear, clear in your mind. This guy, he, sure, he wants to buy these, but when these guys come, he needs to deal with them first. So get rid of the player characters and move on. The players want to sell the spikes, sure, but when they see that, they're interested. Why? Because that's what player characters do. They look for storylines and for new things to explore and discover. Clearly, there's something going on there. You know, is there some metagaming, I suppose? Why would the GM, why would I have those guys come into the store at that moment, right? Well, that's the thing. In terms of storytelling, you want things to happen when the players are there. Things have to happen on screen, right? So that's why role-playing is such an opportunity, because the players are interacting with their world. They're in the room. They're not hearing about this later. You know, they're not just, oh, I heard there are these smugglers, and they deal with this guy that, you know, this craftsman, this guy that buys. Oh, okay. Well, no, they saw it right there. That's why it's such a powerful tool. And, of course, not too much flavor, because what can happen is you, uh, okay, you're going to go over to the um, this guy's shop, and you go in, and you knock on the door, you ring a bell, and nothing happens or something. He takes a while, and then they ring a bell. And he comes and he kind of looks out the window and sees you and then comes and opens the door and says, maybe you want him to say, oh, not today, I can't deal with you because you're thinking about this smuggler thing. Okay, but it's a lot easier to just say, you walk into his store and he's behind the counter or he just comes out from the back room. How can I help you, gentlemen? Well, we've got these manicure things. Oh, okay, and just like that. And he doesn't have to have a funny accent. I had a thing where there was somebody that wanted to do a guy with a hearing problem, and he kept going, huh? Huh? And after about two or three times, that became very unfunny, right? Because we were just like, that's too much flavor. Okay, he's got a hearing problem. That's great. Or a limp. He can barely walk. You know, or he's crabby, or he's fighting with his wife, and she's coming out and yelling at him, and they're distracting. Now, what were we talking about? You can, you know, I've seen people do that. Flavor is something, it's like a spice. It should just be lightly sprinkled. Just to make everyone kind of unique, everything interesting, and that's it. You, you, you're trying to get to the point of your role-playing situation. Because what's important are the player's objectives. Number one, what are they trying to do? And maybe they're just, they go into a town and they go to a tavern and they just kind of look around and see what's going on to see if they see anything or hear anything interesting or whatever. And then they notice some people arguing in a booth. Do they go over there? Now, people arguing in a booth at a bar, I don't go over there, but, you know, so maybe they see some uh, person that get, when they sees them, gets up and leaves and they ask the bartender, who, do you know who that guy was? Nope. Never heard of him. Right. Or, yeah, I've seen that guy a couple times in here. He comes in every once in a while. He doesn't, doesn't say much, but, you know, buys a beer and then leaves. Really? And, you know, again, and then do they, do they go outside and they can't see him, right? So they've got other things to do, but they come back to that bar. Y'all usually see here like uh, every Tuesday, you know, nine o'clock. So they come in and start you know, interview the guy or whatever. Maybe maybe that guy says no, or maybe he's looking for something. Again, you're you're introducing storylines. What is the objective of that guy? And again, the bartender. The bartender's objective may not to be say anything about that guy who comes in here, because you got to be discreet. And he says, I don't know. I don't know. And he kind of looks at the players, and then the players slip him a, you know, a silver piece or a gold piece. Well, let me tell you, that guy is a strange guy. 
comes in every Tuesday, has a beer, and then another guy comes in. He wasn't here this night. Another guy with a long scar on his face comes in, and they go off together. I didn't see him tonight. No. And then the players are hanging around there, and then the guy with the scar comes in. Why? Because this guy left for some. He saw these players, and there's some connection there. You're creating a storyline, right? You're getting things happening. And it's happening like this. You don't say, so you sit in the bar, what do you do? Well, I don't know. I guess we leave. Well, yeah, right. Instead, <laughs> the players are there and they they're finished the bar and they go back and they see the guy with the scar walking in. Boom, right away. Introducing the storyline and you're keeping things happen because the players are here in this tavern right now while we're playing the game. And this is what makes these, these role-playing encounters interesting and dynamic because you're you're using those principles of of everyone has an objective which is interacting the players too you're introducing storylines in these things uh you're saying yes the bartender he he it's why he initially said no but when you slip him some money because once the players realize people will take money for information they'll 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 hand it around (laughs) makes gold useful right instead of just buying stuff and then the players, you know, the, the, and there's some, the guy's got a scar, but I'm not going to go through some elaborate, like you, de- you everyone's cloaked and you're going to have to figure out who's who, or do, do you know this or that? You know, oh, someone breaks into song. And then someone says, now, again, personally, if you say the bard should do a song at this point, so the bard has to get up there and sing something. Or you have a person that wants to, you know, entertain the crowd somehow or do, you know, again, that's where flavor can run amok, both from the player's standpoint and the GM's. Because what, you know, and again, there's different levels of this. You may have a flavor heavy campaign style and that's what your players like. And an encounter at the tavern takes an hour of playing time. For me, it doesn't need to take that long. You know, I'll give some information and and you don't just explain everything to the players. They have to go in and ask people questions. Because they have an objective. Because remember, one of the <laughs> number one things in an RPG fantasy world where people are carrying weapons and they're spellcasters is to mind your own business. So the, so when the players go in there, they have to initiate things. They have to start things. Who do they talk to? Who do they ask? And again, as long as they have an objective and they're trying to find out something, even if it's just the general objective, like I said, of anything mysterious been going on around here? I don't know. Okay, you could have just everybody say that. But not since that whole thing at the wharf. What was that? Oh, this big fight. You didn't hear about that? And then let us get down, you know. If you buy me a beer, the bartender says, I'll tell you that story. Right? Players' objectives is to find out information, just general information. The bartender, if you, you know, <laughs> make it worth his while, he has a reason to tell you. And they like to be in the know. People like to have information and the secrets that they can share, you know, up to a certain level. Because their objective also is to stay safe, keep his business open and everything. So he's not going to do tell you secrets that are going to get him you know, in trouble with the city guard. Just like the guardsman at the gate isn't just going to be handing out information. He may say, oh, there's a guy down the street. Talk to him. I got things to do. And then when you go to the guy down the street, the merchant who knows everybody, don't have him say, I don't know. Who the hell are you? Who told you? Get out of here. You know, Okay. Unless he does it in a way where you can tell his objective is not to tell anyone anything because he's got something to hide or someone he's afraid of. You're getting a storyline. So you find out about that merchant. Who knows about that guy? And you have another merchant over there. Oh, yeah. Guy thinks he's better than all of us because he deals personally with the king and sells him his cloth. Really? Yeah. And the king's you know, daughter's wedding is coming up. And, you know, he's, he's a little jumpy these days because of that. So, you know, storylines are coming. Information. So that's why the merchant was saying no, you know, and acting all freaked out. And and again, not too much. You're, you're, you're getting right to the point. You're, you're having these encounters. It's not that difficult for the players to find information, unless it is really difficult as a storyline. Otherwise, you're saying yes to the people that they're talking to in, in a way that makes sense to those NPCs' objectives. And you're keeping the flavor, again, in my book, I might, I might have a little less flavor than you enjoy. But, you know, it, it, like I said, with the, uh, you know, spice of salt goes along a little bit, goes a long way. Because you're trying to make these social encounters not turn into a slot, not turn into an endless, you know, uh, effort to get somebody to say something or, you know, anything you do wrong offends people. That's saying no. 
Saying yes means unless the players are just particularly egregious, you have someone who wants to be obnoxious. You can, because, you know, there's an objective there. Get the hell out of my bar if you're causing trouble, right? Because he just wants his business to be thriving. He wants people to be having a good time. And this goes for the, everyone that the players meet, whether it's merchants, the guards, you know, people at the wharf, uh, you know, the, the political leaders of the town. They go to the Magic Users Guild or the Rogues Guild. Any place they go, they all have objectives. And so the player's actions, if they interfere with those objectives, then, then they're going to, you know, come down on them. But other than that, when the players are doing things that, you know, are reasonable, smart, you know, they're, they're trying to investigate your world, you say yes. You have people that will talk to them. And remember, you could have role play situations out in the wilderness with sentient humans. You know, maybe the hobgoblins or orcs or, you know, lizard folk or people that are sort of, you know, not quite friendly with the settlements, the humanoids in the settlements but certainly might, might want to negotiate with the players if they have an objective that isn't just like, these are things we eat, you know. These are there on our land and we kill all intruders. But killing all intruders on your land isn't as interesting as like, what are you doing here? Well, we're looking for X. Well, you should go that way, off our land. And maybe it's the old El Dorado thing that they, the Native Americans did where they said it's over the next hill. But it also could be our enemies are in control of that and we want them to be harmed. Again, they have objectives. The lizard folk, the, the hobgoblins, the orcs, whatever sentient creatures. And we can go down all sorts of creatures, right? As I mind flayers, you know, you, you negotiate with them at your peril or something like that. Dragons are good for this in terms of thinking about role playing and thinking about what they're after and whether they can get that from the players as opposed to just killing them. Or, you know, and maybe they've, they've learned sometimes these adventuring types can be dangerous. So the role playing isn't just cities and you know settlements. It's anywhere where things can communicate and might possibly have an objective that lines up with what the players are offering. And once the players realize this about your world and realize that role playing is going to bring about storylines, th they'll be into it. And 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 then it'll it'll go quickly. It'll run fast. It won't bog down. And it will really make them invested in your world. And a shout out to my Patreon supporters. I love making PDFs and videos each week. Can't wait to get on the next one. And thank you for watching my video. Like it, uh, comment. I'd love to hear about how you handle role-playing situations in your game. But most importantly, my friends, keep playing an RPG game, whichever one you choose, and tell somebody else about it.